Right, welcome back from that short breather. If you're just tuning in, you're still watching Healthy Morning here on HSTV. Proudly brought to you by Prudential Life Insurance Ghana. Always listening, always understanding. It's not time for us to focus a lens on a health issue and it's uh, the liver disease. Uh, because uh, the liver disease actually accounts for approximately 2 million deaths per year worldwide. So it's very necessary for us to have a broad discussion about it so you get to know what causes the liver to damage, if it can be reversed, if there is even anything like a liver transplant, because we have just one liver. Uh, unlike the kidney where there are two, and then you can have a transplant or you can donate to somebody who's own is you know failing or something the liver is just one so as to whether we even have a liver transplant or not we're going to talk about it so i've been joined in the studio by an expert so at this point i'm open the phone line so you can call in whatever questions you have whatever feelings your thoughts they are always welcome you can head on to our facebook page and get to the comment section below and then leave your messages there your questions you can also leave them there the whatsapp number is also at the right hand side of the screen you can also get that and send your messages coming through um yeah, so we'll, we'll activate the phone lines at a point in time. So I've been joining the studio by an expert, of course, to help me to have this discussion. And he's a cellular biologist from Live More Healthcare. He's no other than Mr. Richard Anani Apia. Gracious welcome, say. Thank you, Mona. It's good to have you once again. Yeah, it's good to be back again. Yeah, and a lot of people actually mentioned that our last conversation about the kidney health it was really educative and learned a lot. We thank God. Yeah. So God be to the most high. Yeah, so hoping that we have a more educated one today on the liver disease. Mm -hmm. And like I mentioned earlier, it accounts for approximately 2 million deaths per year worldwide. Yes, worldwide. So it looks like there is a need for us to touch on it because people don't really talk about it, but people are dying from it. So today we want to talk about generally the liver disease. So I want to find out from you as a cellular biologist, what special role do you think the, key, uh, the liver plays in our body? Okay, thank you very much. Um, the liver is one of the most interesting body organs next to the kidney and the heart. Mm. And it's also the largest internal organ. If you take all the organs, mm. the skin is the largest external one. The mm. internal one is also the, the, the liver. The liver. Weighing close to about three grams in an average male mm. and 2.5 in a female oh there's a yes. difference yeah, yeah there's a difference in terms of size is, is, it, is it because the men have this body build their yes, stoic, you know, their stout? men have a lot of muscles okay. but women have a lot of fats in their system okay uh -huh. so that accounts for the difference in sizes in size. and also account for the different way but not, not all that we stand in they all do the same work, the same work. Uh -huh. so mm. the liver is very important and it helps the body to be able to do a lot of things close to 500 different function mm. is what the liver does mm. 500 and the few of them are relative to what we currently know for example they help the body to be able to break large nutrients to simple absorbable parts say for example you chew meat this morning mm -hmm. the meat is supposed to contain protein yeah but the body cannot absorb that protein so it has to be broken down mm -hmm. into amino acids. Okay. That is where the body will now be able to use. Mm. So that is one aspect of the, of the, the liver. The, the liver. Mm -hmm. Take for example, let's say you've eaten carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. The body cannot absorb the carbohydrate. Mm. It has to be broken down into little absorbable parts. Okay. Like um, sugar, mm -hmm. glucose, glucose, where the body can now be able to absorb, absorb. and use it. Mm. That's also the work of the liver. Okay. Apart from that, it also stimulates some hormones, and it works in conjunction with axillary organs, like the pancreas mm -hmm. and, and all the other organs that are associated with it. Mm. The pancreas is associated with it, they're responsible for production of insulin. Okay. So they work in hand in hand with them, mm. and the gallbladder too as well, okay. also attached to the liver. Oh. So, guys, they position just a little above our ribs here. Mm. And it does a lot of work. If, um, if you are not, if it doesn't have a problem, you don't get a pain. Oh, so, okay. a rooster is not even there, mm. but it's there, very mm. heavy, and it's helping the system. It does a lot for mm. the body. Right. Uh -huh. One other major function that is that is also a storage organ. Mm. Okay. So, you have nutrients from the food you have eaten. Mm -hmm. But your body is unable to utilize all. Okay. So okay. some of the nutrients are stored in there for future use. One classical example is on a day that maybe you forget to eat or maybe <laughs> you are busy in a right. day. 
you forget to eat. By the time it's 12 or 1, you don't feel hungry anymore. When that happens, the body goes into the liver, which is a storage organ, wow. to extract some nutrients wow. and bring it back into your bloodstream. Wow. So you don't feel like eating anymore. Eating you don't anymore. feel the hunger anymore. If that happens, your liver have done the work. Mm. Mm -hmm. And that is what makes a lot of those who do sedimentary works, like myself and many of us mm. in the corporate world, it puts them at risk to develop a lot of dangerous ailments alongside the liver. So the liver is very phenomenal. It works magically. It produces all the hormones. And every point in time, 15% of the total blood composition of a human being is mm. in the liver. Mm. At every point in time, about 15% of the total blood composition is inside the liver. And they are working in all the various chambers. Mm -hmm. It does not only store nutrients, it also stores toxins and poisons. Some of the poisons is able to denature them, mm. but some of them is kept there for storage. For example, some certain poisons go into the body. The body has no means of getting rid of it. Mm. The liver keeps it. So the liver has two main blood chambers. If you see the picture of the liver, you see how the two blood chambers are. Each of them perform different functions. But one part is for storage of nutrients. nutrients. Another part is for storage of poisons. When you say poisons, what do you mean? Something the body cannot use hmm. and cannot even get rid of. Take, for example, DDT. Hmm. You drink DDT. It goes into your system. It becomes so dangerous that the liver cannot even store it. Mm. So finally, it releases into the bloodstream and mm. it takes you away. Okay. But there are certain points in that are minute effect. Okay. Those ones can be contained and, if possible, denatured in future. For example, the ones available in cosmetics, body creams, and some of them. There are small, small toxic substances. Really? Oh, yes. And are they deliberate that they are in there? They are for preservatives. They, they, okay. The companies use it for preservatives. Wow. And because they won't kill immediately, it's not wow. commercially viable to uh, take them out of the market. Wow. Yes. So some of them are for preservatives. So they are preserved and kept in them. Wow. Like the parabens. I mean, scientific research all over the world have proven the danger of the parabens in terms of its ability to cause liver damage, and in terms of its ability to cause cancer, mm. and so many other things. But they are still kept in cosmetics. Mm. And we use it a lot. Our women use it a lot, except that when I do it, I quickly bath. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I really understand why you're saying that the, the liver is a very interesting organ. Because yes. running us through the functions, they look very interesting, yes. I should say. But you mentioned that, um, you know, when you eat a lot and then it stores the nutrients. Mm -hmm. So maybe after 12, 1, 2, you are mm -hmm. not hungry. Mm -hmm. You realize that you are no more hungry. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it, releases, it them. releases them. Yes. So how about people who keep eating, eating, eating all the time, but then okay. you saw the liver also keeps storing, storing, storing. What happens? Okay. So let's take, for example, this morning, mm -hmm. you might have eaten, let's say, a full worth 20 calories. Let's say you've eaten banku. Right. Okay. By the nature of your work and my work, mm -hmm. some of us, we do a lot of writing and thinking and sitting down. <laughs> so by the time it's 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock or lunchtime, mm -hmm. you might have, the body might have used about, let's say, 10 calories of it. The rest of the 10 goes into the liver for storage. Mm -hmm. Unlike a mason or a carpenter, by the time you lift 6-inch block, almost all the food is gone. Yeah. So you have to replenish mm -hmm. and do all those things. Okay. But by our work involves a lot of physic, um, thinking mm -hmm. and a lot of writing, sediment, mm -hmm. especially bankers. Yeah. So the body goes in there and stores it them. Stores the nutrients. Lunch time, by procedure, you are served with food. Yeah. Even though you know you are not that much yeah. hungry, but you have to eat. Yeah. You eat, your body uses a little. Another thing goes to add. So the storage capacity keeps piling. Piling. If you do that for the next 10, 20 years, you notice that the liver has a lot of storage of nutrients inside. These nutrients will begin to come out on their own because like you have savings at the bank, mm -hmm. you are not using it, then the bank will chase you in the house that so may say your money at this bank is too much. Like you love is chasing us. Well, mm -hmm. that's <laughs> I hope you understand. Okay. So some of the nutrients will now be moving back into the bloodstream. Mm. For if glucose is now moving back into the bloodstream, it means your sugar level is going to rise. Wow. And that will give you diabetes. Wow. I don't know if you see the picture. I, I, I really so get if the glucose analysis. is too much, that's what's happening. So if somebody is having diabetes now, mm -hmm. it did not start today. No. Years of storage. Mm. 
especially if you work in a, a corporate organization. Mm. So all the nutrients will pile up, and when it gets to some stage, those things will start with go, going back into your bloodstream, and you start having problems. So the storage capacity of the liver might be exceeded. Mm. So you say as a, as a biologist that then sometimes we should reject food, sometimes. Not entirely. So that leaves what the nutrients the liver has stored, mm -hmm. at least you now start serving to the body. Not entirely rejecting food, but sometimes you should take a deliberate effort to do fasting. Because that is one way of getting the liver very strong. You are laughing wow. because the last time you fasted is when <laughs> the pastor said 21 day fasting. Even with that, you did only 12. <laughs> It's not important, my dear. You see, what happens is um, when you deliberately fast on mm. empty stomach, what happens is that the body has no option than to go into the storage and empty it for use. By that, you'll be reducing the storage capacity of the liver, mm. relieving the liver of some of the toxins that it has. So, for example, if this continues, a healthy liver will now become fatty because mm. example a lot of nutrients have been converted for example glucose mm. when the glucose level is high or the carbohydrate level is high mm -hmm. the liver will store it as glucose but if it can't use it it will not convert it into fat and give it to the skin which will be stored under the skin as an adipose under the adipose tissue so it starts gaining weight okay it gets mm. to a way that the fats that have been converted the carbohydrate mm. that have been converted into glucose mm -hmm. have now been converted into um, uh, uh, fats mm. and this fat is inside the liver and some of the body parts so you get a fatty liver disease mm. that is where most liver diseases start from. start from apart from there are different categories of liver diseases mm. some are infections microorganisms like viruses those are the hepatitis hepatitis a b c and the like yeah. the second one is the fatty liver Mm. So at that stage, fatty liver sets in. This is not being controlled. You are still going on the same lifestyle, eating the same meal, sleeping mm. at the same time, mm. not fasting, not drinking enough water. Mm. That thing continues. So the fat becomes so much that the liver begins to have swellings on it. That's an inflammation. Then that will also graduate. Then you have cirrhosis of the liver. Okay. If care is not taken, that will further graduate to become cancerous. Mm. So it keeps growing. It's just growing. So you see how a healthy liver mm -hmm. can metamorphosize itself mm -hmm. throughout the, the stages mm. and get into a cancer mm. cell. So apart from the infection, even with the infections, they still go ahead to go through the same process. Mm. Because when the microorganism enters and it has less to feed on, it can't multiply that much. Wow. It can multiply that much. So it goes on stage by stage, stage by stage, before you realize you have developed alcoholic liver. It's even worse when you're taking you take in alcohol. You take in alcohol. Because alcohol contains a lot of glucose and a lot of carbohydrates. All this in its excess, I mean, the food we eat, mm. carbohydrate mm -hmm. that we eat, mm -hmm. the system is able to convert some of them into glucose for use. Now, the alcohol you have taken also contains that much. So it goes to add to the storage. That is the more reason why alcohol is too dangerous to the liver than any other yeah. organ. Yeah. Because as to the storage in bulk, what three meals can add to the storage? One thought of Ogogoro, you know that one. There's one type in the very, very hot. Mm -hmm. And we use nails to boil it. Hey. Then, oh, yes. Really? They'll, they'll tell you if you go to the village. One thought can add to the liver so much that about four or five years of meals can add. So before you know, the liver starts swelling, swelling, swelling. You see, at, the, at some point, it, 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 it swells so much that bile that is being produced mm -hmm. will now begin to come to the skin. It makes the yellowing of the eyes. So you are, yes, that is where you experience joint this. Mm. It all started from storage of meals. Most people are dying from liver disease not because of infections. Okay. It's because of overnutrition. Mm. In as much as less nutrition is dangerous, mm -hmm. overnutrition is equally problem. dangerous. Mm. And some of the food we eat are overly nutritious. Wow. I mean, overly nutrition. They are overly nutritious. I mean, you get someone with 
garu and beans that alone is not enough cocoa is there the bean has uh, protein inside the cocoa is there plantain protein. even eggs some add eggs oh add egg, egg and fish mm. overly nutritious okay. all this weight goes into the liver for storage mm. and with no time the storage capacity will be exceeded mm. so we have to metamorphosize into the process so fatty disease starts and goes on goes on before you know you have cancer Wow. And you don't understand. Wow. So, so, so with the gobe you mentioned, how, how should we go about it? Oh. Just the beans and the gari is The fine. beans and the gari is fine. We shouldn't add the plantain. Oh, pan the plantain, plantain is, is also okay, good. But we should do away with the egg. Cause it's equal no, 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 no. If you are doing that combination, I mean, one nutrition, the other day you invited a nutritionist here. When, yeah. she, can, when she comes, ask her again. Right. They will tell you this is too much. Right. Wow. <laughs> they will tell you this is too much. So when you do that, the cells begin to multiply exponentially. Mm. Mm. They begin to multiply exponentially, uncontrollably. And because of that, you begin to develop cancer cells. From the fatty liver to cirrhosis, mm. then cancer cells, then the table continues. Wow. Look, look, looking at the table, you mentioned earlier about the fatty liver disease. Yes. You mentioned that then that is how it affects the bowel and then it appears on the skin. And yes. Then the yellow and that's where the jaundice comes in. That is comes where in. the cirrhosis. And, and we hear babies die of jaundice. Is it because of activities of the mothers or it's, it's, it's something with the baby itself? Oh, sometimes, most of the time, uh, those things are normally with genetically uh, problems. Problems. Okay. genetic issues. And sometimes when babies give birth like that, Lot of things go on during their development stages. Okay. Uh -huh. So those ones are not necessarily uh, liver issues. Liver issues. Okay. But when you expose, sometimes it's also um, as a result of reduced vitamin D, mm. especially in babies. Mm. So normally midwives will ad advise you that okay. expose the child to the okay. sun for some while, a okay. while so that the okay. sun will be able to convert. So with time right. you see that that one is gone. Right. So that one has no damaging effect on right. it. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we are still talking about the liver disease, and I'm, I'm really learning a lot, especially the interesting functions you've run us through. And I'm really interested in the gobe, because a lot of Ghanaians at this point, they say gobe is life, world, world life is gobe. So we should try as much as possible to do the gari and the beans and the plantain, okay. and do away with the more protein stuff, like adding the fish and the egg and all of that. Okay. Well, you've, you've run us through a lot of the uh, problems with the, as in the liver disease yeah. and all of that. Let's talk about how we get to know that, okay, now our liver isn't functioning properly. How am I supposed to know that something is happening? Okay. Ideally, it takes a very long time to identify if your liver has a problem, if you have not changed it. Okay. I mean, uh, there is laboratory work that mm. can detect the smallest change in the liver. Mm. That uh, um, I mean, if you do a liver function test, mm -hmm. there are indicators they will show you how far your liver is working and okay. how strong it is. That aside, mm -hmm. apart from that, there are some symptoms mm -hmm. and signs that will show sure. that will know that you no, know, this my liver is overloaded. Mm. First of them is nausea and vomiting. Remember, I've told you that the liver has the potential to store toxins. Yes. When the toxic overload is too much they begin to move out into the esophageal tract and the digestive tract. Because that is not the actual pathway, you begin to feel like nausea and vomiting in an attempt mm. to get rid of some of the toxins. Okay, okay, okay. So unexplained okay. nausea and vomiting is also one of the major signs. That is when you, when you are not even pregnant. You are not even pregnant. Because pregnancy comes with such symptoms. Let's also remember that worms can also cause that. Right. It's important with right. the worm. Okay. At least every three months. Okay. When last did you the worm? Oh, recently. <laughs> recently. Okay. Went. So when you the worm, it helps to get, it rid, of to get rid of that. But if you have the worm and you are still getting unnecessary... Whether nausea, male or female. Whether male or female, you have to go check the, go liver. Check the liver. It's important. Mm. Two... In an attempt to store more things, mm -hmm. it will be trying to expand itself. And sometimes, when the toxic, especially if you take alcohol, mm -hmm. the liver tries to do a like little of mm. some expansion. Well, not the same expansion, but mm -hmm. it's just to give us space. Mm. You understand? Okay. And that is going to trigger some blood flow. Mm. The blood can take a different direction, and you can begin to experience this in your nostrils. So, bleeding from the nose. 
Wow. It's also one of the major signs that you need to get checked your liver. Wow. One other thing the liver does is to help you sleep better. Okay. So if you are not sleeping better mm. and your sleeping cycle has become something which is there, this have, today you are able to sleep, tomorrow you are not able to sleep. Wow. It's important. Check Among it. all the factors that you check, you also check your liver. Body pains. Because this liver is going to release a lot of waste into the system, and the, system, the liver is unable to get it right away from there. Hmm. And because this waste will be released onto the muscles, it's going to cause muscle reactions. And these muscle reactions can give you a lot of pains. You know very well you've not done anything massive hmm. or so severe for some time. Hmm. But you feel like you've lifted some six inches below, and the whole of your body part is paining you. That one also is a cause for action that you also need to check the function of the liver. Wow. wow. Mm -hmm. you, so, mentioned, you mentioned blood flowing from the nostrils and yes, all of that. Yes. So how about people who visit the washrooms and then they, they see blood? They be, they, from the nostrils? No, they go to the washroom. This, that one through the yeah. normal, that yeah. one there. It's, it's, it can be an internal infection. An internal infection. Internal infection, okay. internal bleeding okay. or something that is related okay. to that. Uh -huh. okay. But I'm talking about the one that is coming from the from nostrils. The nostrils. Wow. It's important to check the liver as well. Wow. So all these indicators, ideally, you shouldn't wait to see them before you check your mm -hmm. liver function. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if the need be arise, I mean, you discuss with your doctor, your doctor will quickly recommend that you do a liver function test. Okay. In case it is hepatitis or an infection, it is important you know to do a test that will show us the count. I'm trying my best to avoid most of the medical waste. <laughs> you see, when the virus gets inside, mm -hmm. they, because there is nutrients in the liver, they feed and multiply. Good. With time, if they were two, they become four. And the most method of that they use to multiply is binary fiction, okay. dividing themselves into two. Mm. So two becomes four, four becomes eight, mm -hmm. eight becomes 16, 16. 32, 64, mm. like that. So you do a viral load test. That will tell you that this is the number of viruses in your system. Okay. Then you can start tackling it from there. Mm. Uh -huh. So the viral load test is also important in case there is an infection, which is a bit of hepatitis or any of the hepatitis conditions. Wow. So it's important that you check the liver you in relation to its function. Mm. Mm. Okay, so when we find out and then realize that, okay, this is what you are suffering from, liver diseases, are they temporal or when they come, they stay forever? Oh, th there is no disease that stays forever. Okay. Even with, even with HIV. Mm. <laughs> There's a lot to be said about it. Okay. But the long and short of it is that liver diseases, the liver is one of the organs that is capable of regenerating faster. It has a higher regenerative potential. Mm. Every doctor will tell you that the liver can, is capable of generating new cells very, very fast so that it can get rid of whatever waste accumulated on it, or whatever toxic substance that might be inside. So there is a way out. It's not a death sentence to have a liver disease. <laughs> there is a treatment process right. that can, but the treatment process is much faster and better if you are it detects early or you detect the disease early. I mean, when it gets to the cancerous stage or when it gets to some other terminal stage, it becomes difficult to heal. And sometimes the healing process will be too slow down the damaging process. Okay. And before doctors could resuscitate mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. or bring you back to life, mm. the damage has also been there. Mm. And sometimes when it gets to that stage, a transplant will be required. Mm. Uh -huh. Transplant wow. will be required. But uh, I hope no one gets to that extent. It's yeah. important we take care of it so that, I mean, the slighter detection, doctor can work alongside with you, professionally, nutritionally, medically, or any other means possible to bring the liver back on mm. track. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the transplant. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, with comparing the liver and the kidney, kidneys, we have two. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if I should give you one, I mean, I have one to survive. Exactly. But the liver is just one. Mm -hmm. So, how, how is a transplant done? Uh, am I supposed to give out if you, yours is damaged? What happens to me? Hmm. Mine is not damaged. That one, take it out. <laughs> uh -huh. now, let's, let's go back to the question. You see, uh, in advanced countries... Okay. They have a system where they can harvest a liver of a healthy person, especially in an accident. In an accident. Where an ambulance will be quick to be at the accident scene, realize that, oh, this person will not survive. 
a check and see vital internal organs that are good. They can quickly harvest it. Oh, so why are you saying advanced countries? They can't be done here in Ghana. Oh, maybe now that we have started collecting Ilebi, maybe we can get money <laughs> for that. But you understand what I'm saying? We can get money for that as well. But the long and short of it mm -hmm. is that wherever it is fast, where the system is fast, right. where they can harvest from such a person, then they can keep it can keep. and give it to someone who will need it. Mm. However, sometimes certain parts of the liver can also be transplanted, if not whole. Certain parts of it. Okay. So depending on the part that is damaged. Okay. So we the, have parts. Yes, of the there, liver. there are parts. Okay. Certain parts of it, not if not whole. Mm. So uh, necessary routine work needs to be done. So many other uh, medical and legal checkups needs to be confirmed before some parts like that, if necessary, will be transplanted to another person. Okay. I mean, the, there's a lot of legal procedures, including the mental status of the donor and okay. so many other things. All of them checked. When doctors confirm it's possible, mm. it, it will be done. But um, I'm yet to see how that is effectively done currently in this country, especially okay. now that our uh, ambulance system is improving. Mm. I'm sure in future mm. we will we'll get there. Okay, right. At this point, I want us to activate the phone line 0302 7763 We are talking about liver disease. Uh, whatever question you have concerning that, whatever contributions as well, they are so welcome. You can call us uh, now to ask them. Doc is here to answer your questions. And I always tell you that the people we bring on the show are certified and authentic. So our answers to your questions are simply the best. You can also get the WhatsApp number on your screen and also send your comments, your thoughts coming through. You can also get to Facebook, the comment section beneath, and then leave your messages there as well. So it's 0302 Whatever question you have concerning liver diseases and liver damages and all of that, they are so welcome. Doug, you mentioned that in an accident, so yes. we know that this person is about dying. Yes. Then now, in a quick mode, we can get the liver. Then maybe later you speak to family. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. and then you can store it and then donate to somebody who is going to have a liver damaged yes. later on something. That's so, how about me as an individual? Mm -hmm. Does it mean I can't donate? donate? Oh. Because it's just one I have, mm -hmm. and I'm not dying. Mm -hmm. So, so you want to donate? So, does it mean that you that you can't donate at all? Because you are alive, you are not dying yet. You are, you are not dying. Yes. You are strong. You are strong. Kicking, doing everything. Yes. And you want to give your. Yes. Unless you are, that means you've signed the the. Right, so it you, means you can't do that. Yeah, yes, you, you, the law right. won't allow you to do that. Okay, okay. Maybe if some parts. Okay, and, with, and with that part, I can give out, and I'm also going to be fine. Yes, because there will be checks that will be made to ensure that that part that you give, in, you give out will be fine. So does it, does it expose me as a donor to any wrecks? Yeah, of course. Once it's a surgical procedure, okay. and once it's a donation, okay. and once it's anything, there is... It exposes you some le some way mm. to some risk attached to it. But before that, doctors will preview you okay. on all the other risks associated mm. with it, all the other conditions that okay. are associated with it. Because the, the liver, liver disease is not only one. Mm. There are so many of them. Mm. This is just a brief summary of them. But when you have a particular one, there are certain parts of the liver that could be needed. That could be needed. Okay, okay. let me speak with James, my first caller. Hello, good morning. Hi, Please, why are you calling from James? Please, I'm calling from Kaswa. Okay, can you go ahead? Uh, please, I tell us I have a liver, liver problem uh, with a uh, capital Z called. Can I get some treatment? You have a liver problem? Yeah, capital Z. Okay, and you, have, you want to find out if you can get some treatment? Yeah. Okay. Doc, is it treatable? Yes, yes, yes. There's, there's, there's treatment for it. There's treatment for uh, it. There's okay. treatment for it. Okay. So professionally, you have to see your doctor. Right. The doctor will run some checks. And depending on your mm. level, treatment can be commenced from there. Mm. Mm. So with a liver disease, does it boil down to affecting all parts of your body? Um, or is it just an internal or something? Yes, yes. But you see, the internal organs work hand in hand. They work together. Mm. So when one part is infected mm. or one part has deficiency, um, virtually it affects the others, but not that much as okay. compared to other internal organs, as compared to either the kidney or okay. the liver. But definitely, it's going to affect so many things. 
some level of diet i mean for example your sleep is going to be disturbed your gastrointestinal intestines mm -hmm. your ability to digest food and other things also going to be disturbed okay. in the process mm. and the headaches are going to occur okay okay. because of the expansion of the brain mm. all those things are going to happen mm. so basically it is going to affect the internal organs but not virtually all mm. of them mm. okay let's speak with grace as well good morning good morning please why are you calling from i'm grace coming from accra okay please go ahead please i want to know if uh with liver disease if you can have a swollen stomach or leg. If you can have what? Swollen stomach or swollen leg. stomach. Yes. Or leg. Okay. 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 All right. Thank you so much for calling. Don't be touching that. You're welcome. All right. Um, that's a very sharp question. Mm -hmm. You see, the liver has, as I said, mm -hmm. has a lot to do with. It goes through some expansion process for mm -hmm. some time, especially when it is infected and it has some cirrhosis, so it enlarges. That will protrude the upper part of your tummy up. Like somebody who has drunk so much, you say, I try the photo. See the way the stomach protrudes like that. Not necessarily your stomach, but we classify mm -hmm. anything below here as, as a stomach. stomach. <laughs> okay, so that will protrude it. Okay. And the toxic lo levels are high. And because the toxic levels are high, some will, gravity will push them down. And that will lead to swelling. Of the, of the feet, especially if you sit for a very long mm. time. You walk up, you wake up, and you walk for a while, it splits up. You sit down or you sleep, you see that your feet begins to swell, and all those ones are there. So it's possible to have a swollen, not stomach, abdomen, abdomen. called a swollen abdomen, but and you also have a swollen feet mm. as one of the symptoms mm. that you experience. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in, in all of these things, uh, can it be reversed? Oh, yes, uh, as I said. There are stages mm. and treatable stages. All the effectiveness depends on the stage. Mm. Oh, okay. The effectiveness of the treatment it depends on the stage and depends on the level of infection, depends on the level of exposure, and depends on the loss of toxins that are already accumulated. All in all, a liver function test will be conducted to know the stage of the condition. Sometimes when it gets to cancerous and it gets to advanced stages, the rate of deterioration will be too fast to be reserved within time. That is why it's always advisable that once you notice it, you consult your doctor, proper examination is done, and treatment starts. Because earlier detected, better treated. Right. 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 Okay. All right. Let me speak with my last caller. Good morning, Auntie Maggie. Hello. Good morning. Please, where are you calling from? Hello. Good morning, I'm calling from Tema. Okay, please go ahead. Good morning, I'm Pardon? Please go ahead, Auntie. Okay, I just want to ask the doctor. In the, in the beginning, the doctor said you have to take something uh, every three months. You know, I forgot the name, just like uh, uh, something to clear your system. But I don't live here, I live abroad. That come on holidays, maybe two hundred months. Do I have to do that? Auntie Maggie, kindly come again. You know, yeah. Um, kindly, kindly lower the volume of your TV yeah, set. Uh, yes, kindly lower that so we talk. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Please go ahead. I can hear you. You can hear me now. Okay? Yes, please. Yeah. Yeah, in the beginning, I had it, when I had the television, the doctor was saying that you have every three months, you have two forms, and I've forgotten about it. To clear your system regarding to the liver? Oh, he mentioned that every three months you should deworm. Oh, he mentioned that every three months. Yeah, that's the way. Deworm, yes, yeah. you should deworm, and then in every year you should have, have your liver checked. checked. Right. Okay, I'm, I'm really concerned about the deworming because yes. where I live, we don't do that. Oh, really? <laughs> I think, I think you can get to the hospital. Why do that yet? We don't do that. Wow. I don't think they don't encourage us to do that in the UK. Wow. <laughs> but Auntie Maggie, you should. You should do that. Yeah. Yeah, you should, you should no, get... I've never heard them saying that we should deworm. Uh, so, 
it's, it's really important. So try as much as you can. Okay, okay. Thank you so much for calling. Okay. So, can I, can I have the name of, or the doctor will repeat it? Yeah, he's from Live More Healthcare. He's Mr. Uh, Richard Anani Apia. Okay. Or if I go to the chemist, would they be able to advise me? Right, right, right. They will, and you can get a dilemma from them as well. Okay. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you very much. Bye. Doc. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so she should she, do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, answer yeah. her. Yes, answer yeah. her. Yeah. Say, junior doctor. Yeah. Diego <laughs> <laughs> says I'm a doctor without portfolio. <laughs> She's telling him that now I do have a portfolio. Okay, so ha, so with, you mentioned that it can be reversed, you yes. know, at, at this point or the stage. Yes. Something can be done about it. Mm -hmm. So how long can it take you for it to be entirely reversed? Okay, it depends on two things. Okay. The first one is the extent of damage. Okay. Which laboratory records and a metabolic profile will show. Mm. The second thing is how your system responds to treatment, mm. which cannot be determined unless you commence the treatment process. Mm. So to say that it can be reversed in a week or a month or a year time is something that science have not yet been able to prove that for now. But what it is is that whatever stage that you are, you have to be able to assess the condition so that you commence treatment. That will determine how long it will take you to reverse it. Reverse so it. Okay. it is varied from person to person. It's not a one-time quick thing. Okay. You know, Doc, I've had some myths uh, about the liver. Some mm -hmm. say that the fatty liver only affects fat people. Mm -hmm. Some also say that the liver disease is only exposed to older people. Mm -hmm. How true or false is this? Oh, this was a science long ago. Mm. Currently, it doesn't cease it doesn't, to exist. Right. You know, science, there's always change in knowledge. Right. And um, uh, because people assume that fat people have more fat, mm -hmm. they were thinking that. It, actually, there was a research work that showed that fat people are more prone to fatty mm. liver disease. Okay. But these days, records at the various health facilities mm -hmm. is indicating mm. that even slim people might be slim in physical, <laughs> but inside, they there's have, a lot of fat Yeah, inside. they have mass bones. Uh -huh. mm. So, it does not, as I said, fat too does not necessarily mean that you have only fat muscles only on you. It is the carbohydrate or you have eaten a lot of fatty foods. Is the carbohydrate that you use that is converted to fat for storage. Okay. And this fat serves as a raw material for production of cholesterol. Actually, cholesterol is produced by the liver. Mm. So you don't get cholesterol disease from the food you are eating, okay. but you get it from the liver's excess production. Mm. And that is where you begin to have liver uh, cholesterol problems. Mm. So one first line of treatment is when someone has a cholesterol problem. Mm. The first line of treatment is the checking mm. of the liver to restore the liver mm -hmm. so that you can limit the rate at which the liver is producing a lot of cholesterol. Okay. But you know, cholesterol has so, two, two yeah. different types. So right. maybe later we'll go we'll into talk that. About that. Yeah, I mm -hmm. have a minute to wrap up. I want you to look into your camera. Give us your last words. And in your last words, tell us some of the foods we can eat and some foods we can avoid. All right. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. In my last words, I would like everyone to take care of the liver. That is one. The shortest way you can do that is to first, at least for once in a week, go on a dry fast to empty the storage where the liver is keeping. Second is for you to ensure that once every year you are able to do a liver fasting test and other tests that are related to that. In view of that, you'll be restoring the liver function You'll be maintaining the strength it carries, and you'll be making sure that it doesn't get infected or get you a surprise visit in future. So I'll ask that everyone watching us or listening to us should be able to check the liver first, fast once in a while to ensure that the toxins are removed and be able to maintain a lot of healthy liver so that in the end, everything will be fine. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Doc. Uh, I just had a very broad and educative discussion with Doc. He's Mr. Richard Ananipoku. He's a cellular biologist from Live More Healthcare. Thank you so much for passing by. Welcome, and thank Madam. you so much to you viewers as well.